Okay, so now we are getting set to start our experiment, which we are hoping to do imaging, but also tunneling spectroscopy. So there's a few things we want to do in order to get uh, set up. Um, we'll come back to uh, the sample and tip in a moment. Um, ideally, for a tunneling spectroscopy measurement, we would be at cryogenic temperatures. Um, um, but right now the system is at room temperature, so uh, we'll, we'll be working at room temperature. But if we were um, measuring at cryogenic temperature, then the first thing to do before you start experiment is to top up the cryostat um, to make sure that that's nice and full and the system is at a very stable temperature. You know, not only is it full, but it's been full for a long time. It's not, you know, if you've just, if you've just filled it from room temperature, then everything is still, is still cooling. So it's the Christ that should be full. It should have been full for a long time. And you want to make sure that you top it up um, immediately before you start your experiment um, or, you know, some, or, you know, half an hour, an hour before you start your experiment. Um, that will give you the maximum amount of time to do your experiment before you need uh, to, to refill. Um, but let's go down uh, to this end of the system. So here we have a rotary pump and we're going to switch this rotary pump off now. Um, what this rotary pump does uh, is it pumps down a differential feed through um, here. Uh, because this manipulator uh, is uh, a cryogenic manipulator um, uh, and we can rotate the manipulator on this axis here. Uh, that means that we can't have a conflat flange here that would that would restrict that rotation. And instead, what you have here are two inside this this um, <clears throat> excuse me inside this flange here are two um, PTFE seals, uh, sort of you know about this this far apart. Uh, and uh, this manipulator um, is a sort of a, you can imagine a polished um, cylinder of metal that slides in through those two PTFE rings, those two sort of Teflon rings. Um, and that's what makes the seal, but of course that's not uh, a very good seal. Um, and so what we do is we pump the gap between the, the two seals. So on this side we have um, UHV, um, and then we have this region in here, which is being pumped down to probably something like 10 to the minus 3 millibar or so. And then on the other side of this seal, we have, uh, we have atmosphere. So, um, you know, if we switch off this pump, then uh, we will slowly leak um, um, into this this um, containment area and then we'll slowly leak from that containment area into the UHV chamber and for that reason we keep this differential pumped on uh, pump switched on whenever we can um, but it's usually a good idea to turn it off when you're going to do your STM experiments so this the system will hold a uh, good vacuum you know for, for quite some time so it's okay to switch it off and the reason to switch it off is because you don't want to have um, this this noisy thing vibrating uh, away um, and potentially causing vibrational noise on our experiments. Um, you can see that it, there is some isolation here. This is a concrete brick um, that sits on, on some, some, um, some sort of rubber feet. And you can see the, the plumbing comes through this concrete block. And the idea, if you, if you feel this side, that's vibrating quite a lot. If you feel this side, it isn't. So this is a sort of a vibrational isolation to stop um, the vibrations from this pump um, coupling back into the system. Um, but a better thing is just to switch it off completely. So over here we have a valve. You can see this valve is currently open because the handle is in line um, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the tube, with the line itself. And so we want to close that. So we close that valve by turning it 90 degrees. So whenever the handle then is perpendicular um, to the flow um, through, through the line, uh, then that valve is closed. Um, and now we can simply turn this pump off. Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, that pump is switched off. Now um, uh, we need to check a few other things. If I look over here, I can see that the turbo pump um, is currently running. Uh, and obviously we don't want to have the turbo pump running while we're trying to do our STM experiments. That, um, that's the turbo pump uh, here and it's being backed up by uh, the uh, mechanical uh, rotary pump um, down there. So we need to switch that pump off but before we switch it off, um, we need to uh, know why it's pumping. And the reason why it's pumping right now is because um, in a parallel experiment, we are currently pumping down um, this um, molecular sample. Um, and, you know, 
I, I'm, I'm aware of the status of this experiment and I know that I'm able to close this right now. If you weren't, then obviously you'd need to talk to whoever is conducting uh, that experiment. Um, but you can see that um, the valves here I've already closed. So the valve here um, and the valve here are closed. Um, we want to close those because we don't want to vent this part that we've just been pumping down. And if I come over here, I follow, follow this, um, this gas work here, this comes back and goes down into the, the turbo pump um, via this tube. And again, I've already closed um, the gate valve that was there. So I've closed uh, all of those valves. And so now I can go ahead and switch off the turbo pump. Okay, so let's turn off the turbo pump. I do that simply by pressing that uh, green button that currently says on. Um, just before I do that, though, one more thing. Um, up here we have a, um, um, a monitor that's monitoring the pressure in our, um, in our gas line here. And you can see that the pressure is currently 1 times 10 to the minus 7. Um, and it was a little lower before, and that's because I've already closed this valve. So I can show you if I just open up this valve again, and now that opens the, the gate valve here. So now I'm pumping again on that gas line and we should see um, that pressure decreases. So you can see that's already um, gone down from one times 10 to the minus seven down to three times 10 um, to the minus eight. Okay, but I'm going to um, close uh, that valve again, give that a bit of a, a squeeze. Um, and so that, uh, is closed and you'll see um, that pressure will slowly rise. Um, so now I am, I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the turbo. So you can hear, um, sorry, I just heard someone rumbling a dewer outside. Um, uh, so yeah, so now you can hear that the, that the pumps uh, have uh, switched off. Maybe you can hear the high pitched whine of the turbo slowly spinning down. So there's a sort of a, a high pitched noise and the turbo is spinning down. So the turbo is going to take, you know, sort of 15 or 20 minutes um, to spin down. When the turbo does spin down, we don't want it to vent to air. We want it to vent to nitrogen. And so the way that we do that, the, the vent, when the, when the turbo vents, let me show you, uh, if we go down here, um, uh, right now the turbo is, it, the blades are reducing their um, rotational speed uh, and this electronic box is monitoring how fast they're spinning. Once they reach uh, a certain level, once they sort of slow down enough, um, then there is a valve here uh, that will automatically open. I mean, it'll open to let the gas from this, uh, from this line um, into the back of the turbo and that will um, vent the turbo with whatever gas is in this line and cause the blades to completely stop spinning. And so this gas line, um, we could have that just open to air, then the turbo pump would vent with air. The problem with that is that we would then fill the pump with water, uh, you know, and, and oxygen from the atmosphere. Um, and that uh, takes longer to pump down later on. So instead, what we do is we vent to nitrogen. Um, this is a little one-way uh, valve. And I need to find where the gas line is being hidden right now. Uh, okay, here. So here we have. This is the. This is a, like a, it's a quick connect um, for our nitrogen gas line. So I'm going to connect that simply by pushing that in. I need to. I'm just going to need to put the camera down for a second while I do that. Okay. So maybe you heard the little click as I pushed uh, those. Um, that connection together. So now that is connected and the next thing is just to make sure that we have the nitrogen gas turned on. Okay, so let's go over to our gas cabinet and look at the nitrogen gas system. So this is the nitrogen gas bottle. You can tell it's nitrogen because the cylinder is gray. Um, and it also says here uh, zero grade nitrogen. So uh, this is our nitrogen gas cylinder. Um, this is our pressure regulator um, that then handles the flow um, out into the system. Now you shouldn't use this 
uh, guess, gas system unless there's someone here to, to observe you um, the first time around. I uh, um, uh, please don't consider this video um, uh, sufficient instruction on how to use um, this system. Um, I, it's, I think it's important that there are two people in the lab when you do this, um, you know, the first time or even the first few times until you're very confident that you know what you're doing. Um, but nevertheless, since I'm not able to be in the lab often, I want to run through um, a description of this um, with you now. So the first thing to do is we, um, we're going to feel um, the valve here. So if I just sort of try and turn that clockwise, I can feel that's very stiff. That means it's probably closed. Or it could mean that someone has dramatically over-opened it. If you over-open it all the way and crank that really hard, then it can also feel like it's closed. Um, but it feels like it's closed, so I'm just going to try and turn it um, anti-clockwise to open it. Okay, and so that, um, uh, that now uh, is, is open. Um, and um, in fact, what I didn't say, but I did, I did check before I started doing the video, um, was the rest of the, the manifold over here. So maybe let's take a, take a step back. So let's keep that, um, that valve closed and let's have a look at the gas manifold um, first of all. So here you can see this valve is currently open. You can see this valve is open because that's what this little green indicator here means. And you can see that this, um, uh, valve is currently closed. So that's what the little red um, indicator means. Um, and this one is closed because this line is kind of like the vent line. If you wanted for some reason to vent um, the gas out of the bottle, you could open this, this valve. But this valve is typically closed when we're operating the system. Um, so we have now this, this valve here um, is open. Now we go next to the pressure regulator. And so this regulates the pressure on the input coming from the bottle to the output, which is going to flow out to our system. And first of all, we want to check that uh, we've got that set to be essentially sort of a zero pressure on the output. So we can do that by just winding that all the way anti-clockwise. Again, never wind any valves. You, never, you don't wind them all the way anti-clockwise until they stick because that can lead you to think later that it's closed when it's open. So you sort of open it. Okay, that's the open point. You can see I've just, I've just turned that a little bit back clockwise. So when I come and touch it, I can feel how oh, it's very loose. So that, that tells me that this is, um, you know, well, it's not, it's not stuck. In either, if it's stuck in either position, then, it, then it's not clear if it's completely closed or completely open sometimes. So um, from here, so we have, this is the input pressure from the bottle. This is the output pressure that's going to go to the system. Um, uh, over here, this is then uh, another valve. Um, and so that, that is just a shutoff valve if you wanted to close this for some reason, but that um, should be open in order for us to use um, the system. So again, you can see when I open it all the way, now it's kind of stuck. So someone might come along and touch that and think, oh, it's closed. When it's actually not closed, it's all the way open. So you never leave them, you never open a valve and leave it sort of jammed um, shut. So you open it, okay, that's the light, that's the end point. Now just twist it back a little bit so that when anyone comes along and touches it, they immediately feel that it's loose and okay, that valve is uh, currently open. Now, if we go up here, we have um, a fitting. This is a, a sort of a safety release um, that's been installed um, uh, by, uh, by BFC or, or, or it, this is not to keep our system safe. This is to keep um, the uh, sort of gas lines in this, in this room um, uh, safe. Okay, but that's just a safety overpressure valve. Um, this is, a, again, just an open and shut valve. If we wanna use the system, then of course that one needs to be um, open. Uh, this one is here so that they can test whether or not this overpressure valve is currently working or not. Um, but we don't use it. So this one, this valve and this valve should always um, be open in our operation. Then if we go up here, this is the gas line goes up then out through the wall and that eventually goes over to the system that we saw um, earlier. And now if you get up here, you can see there's a T-piece. This T-piece runs out here to, this is now another overpressure protection. And right? so this is an overpressure protection, but as a, I'm not quite sure what the pressure is that, but it's very high pressure for our purposes. Um, this overpressure protection is um, the one that we need. So this, this valve, there's a valve in here that automatically opens when the pressure inside this line essentially equals the pressure that's in the room. Um, so you really can't build up any pressure um, inside. Um, the, the, the gas line. And then finally here we have this valve that goes nowhere and this is just like, you know, like a, a, a double safety. So I can just open that now and I know that any gas that flows here has just got this safe, easy way to flow out into the lab. And so I can't possibly, with this valve open, it's, um, I can't possibly overpressurize the system, um, even if this uh, safety valve were not, were not working. 
Okay, so with all that, let's go back um, to what I did um, earlier. Now we can open the gas bottle. So this is now pressurized um, the line, so the gas is coming out of here from the gas bottle. Um, it's going through this open valve. It's hitting our regulator, but we set our regulator to be all the way um, essentially closed so that the pressure on the output um, is zero. Um, we're not going to see it here. This, this is reading the pressure that's in the bottle. We're not really going to see a pressure change on this one because we're, we have the situation where the gas that's coming out this side is flowing. We're not pressurizing this side. We're going to be flowing that um, into the chamber. So you can't really use this as an indicator um, of, the, of the pressure. Um, but remember, we have this valve open. So now what I'm going to do is to start to crank in the regulator. And this, this will um, increase the pressure on, on the output and we'll start to get some nitrogen flow. And so I don't know if you can hear that, but Okay, so we are, we have now gas that's flowing out of this out of this um, overpressure valve. Um, the safety valve is not really doing anything right now. But if I close this valve, now you can hear that it's coming out of there. So if I open this valve, it's coming out here. If I close this valve, um, it's coming coming out of there. Okay, um, and what I can do is just t just turn that regulator back a bit. So I like to be able to hear that. That tells me that the, this valve is open and operating normally. Um, but we never, nevertheless have, um, uh, you know, we have some um, pressure in this line that we can use to flow uh, into the system. Um, and again, as I said, you don't really see any pressure difference on that, on that um, output there um, uh, because of the fact that the, the nitrogen is flowing out of the system. Okay, so that's a sort of a run through of how the nitrogen gas um, uh, system works for venting. But as I said, um, you should not operate that unless you have had a personal um, instruction in that someone watches you do it um, for the first um, uh, one or two or three times until you feel um, that you understand everything that, that I've just said. Okay, so I actually missed the venting of the turbo in terms of uh, uh, capturing that for the camera. So it spun down while I wasn't filming. Um, but the turbo is now vented and spun down and we can see that um, over here um, again I didn't um, I sort of didn't film this before um, but this indicator at the top here um, is the pressure that's being measured um, between the the turbo and the and the rotary pump so that tells me the fact that this I don't know why that it's a bit odd that that last line there is blinking but um, um, but that, that tells me that the system is vented also that I heard it, it spin down. Um, if we go up here and look at the gas, uh, um, the pressure in the gas line, you can see that's still one times 10 to the minus seven. Okay, so that, that is because we've vented up to here, right? This isn't currently full of nitrogen, um, but on this, this valve is close. So on this side, we're still under pressure. So this nice gas line that we've been preparing um, for the molecular experiment that we discussed before, um, that is still under really a nice, uh, a nice uh, vacuum. Okay, so um, then the next thing to do um, is uh, to, uh, well, first of all, we need to turn the gas off. It's important to turn the gas off, uh, otherwise. Okay, so we are back at the gas cupboard. Um, this is still venting, it's still the nitrogen coming out. Um, if we leave it like that, eventually we will let all of the gas out of the nitrogen bottle and we'll have to buy a new uh, bottle. And don't worry, that's happened uh, many times, but um, let's try not to do it. So we want to turn the gas off. Um, so what I like to do is just to back this regulator off. So now there's um, no pressure in the line. So again, I turn it all the way back and then just a little bit forward so that it's nice um, and open. And the next thing I'm going to do is just to close um, this um, gas at the bottle. So that's, uh, that's um, made this um, safe again. Well, it was always safe, but no, this is, we're no longer letting nitrogen out into this gas cupboard. Um, if you're worried, um, it's not that we, you, you can't uh, fill this cupboard with nitrogen. The reason being um, that if you look uh, right up there, you can see there's that open ended tube that has a, another a hose going into it. Um, that is currently being um, evacuated so that, that is currently being pumped on that um, is then sent out into the roof um, of the the LCN um, you can see that there is a valve there um, and again that but handle being in line with the with the direction of travel means that that valve is currently open okay, so that so this gas cupboard covered um, is con constantly being um, being evacuated 
So the next step is to um, approach the tip. I am not gonna go through the uh, tip approach in this video because I think that's something uh, that you already know or um, if not, then um, uh, that will be covered uh, in a separate, uh, separate video. So um, I'm gonna turn the video off now and just approach uh, the tip. You can see actually that it's not, in fact, can I, can I film? Uh, yeah, so if you look through there, you can see that the tip is currently uh, retracted um, and, and the sample is sort of sitting up and the tip is all the way down um, and the, uh, the sample itself is clamped. So this uh, lever that you can see uh, in the background there, um, that is the, the, uh, telling us that the sample is clamped. So what I'm going to do now is just approach the tip um, and then unclamp uh, that, uh, that sample. Okay, so I've now approached the tip. Uh, you can see here now on the monitor, uh, this is the, the silicon sample. That's one side of the silicon sample, that's the other side of the silicon sample. Um, this is the edge of the sample holder, so the sample holder is sort of this region um, up here. We can't see the other side of the sample holder. Um, the tip, you can see, um, uh, hang on, which one is which? One is which? The, the, this bottom image of the tip is the tip itself. Uh, and the top image is its reflection um, in the silicon sample. And you can see I've tried to uh, get that reasonably close, um, you know, where I'm comfortable that we haven't uh, crashed the tip. Um, and I've also tried, there's a few specks you can see in the sample. So I think these black dots here, not on the sample, I think those are some on the, you know, on the camera lens or, so, or on, on the viewport maybe, some dust specks or something. Um, but the bright specks, I think these are, these are dirt on the sample, so I've tried to stay away um, from those bright specks. And of course, it's sort of the midpoint between the tip and its reflection that, uh, that is the important um, parameter here. I've also closed the doors, um, the inner doors, so the, um, uh, the, the, the inner cryostat doors. Um, the outer ones we generally leave open because we've had some problems with those becoming stuck. Um, of course, you would definitely close them if you're doing cryogenic experiments. I think it's also uh, worthwhile closing them even if you're at room temperature because it'll just increase the thermal stability um, of the system. But then I think we're ready. Oh no, there's one more step. Um, you know, it's best to decouple everything as much as we can. And you, you can see I've had to have the lights and this camera on in order to do the approach. Um, and so the last step is that um, all, all of the things, all of the electronics that are on this bench are powered by this power board here and the power board um, uh, plugs in over here. So the last step is just to unplug that power board and just move the cable um, back over to here so that we, we're also not coupling vibrations in via that, that, uh, that cable. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, I've unplugged the cable. Um, in fact, there's one other one that I might do, which is just to shut down uh, that... Um, uh, shut down that pressure gauge over there and just disconnect um, its cable. Um, yeah. Okay, so to turn this um, gauge off, we need to, uh, let's see, go, so I'm just going to use this arrow, you can see I've just highlighted exit, that's to exit this kind of full screen display. Um, now I'm going to use the down arrow again to select um, the, uh, you know, this, this gauge can monitor two different um, uh, two, you know, two, two different um, measure, measurement points. Uh, in principle, we only have one, uh, but we need to turn that off. So I think if I press the plus, that will change the on to off, and then I just need to click OK, um, and that should go off, right? So that's now um, reading zero. So now we are no longer using um, this pressure gauge, and uh, I'm also going to just reach behind here, um, and there is somewhere a uh, large button, and I'm going to switch that off. Uh, where is it? Okay, so right, uh, right here you can see this is the uh, on, on off switch. There. Okay, so that's off. And with that off, I can now disconnect this. It's just a BNC cable, um, so I need to push that in and twist it and pull it off. Okay, I'm just going to lay that over there. Okay, anything we can disconnect, it's nice to do that because uh, this all, anything that's connecting to the table gives the opportunity to couple vibrations into the system. 
these large gray cables, of course, we need these because these are our, our STM um, tunnel uh, tunneling cables. And experience has shown that it's best that the, of course, they shouldn't be tight. If they're tight, then they're more likely to introduce vibrations from the floor um, in, onto the system. Um, experience shows it's best if they're just sort of randomly and loosely placed. Then that's why we kind of have two on the left side and one over there um, on the on the right side. Um, if you're doing your most sensitive measurements, there are other things that can be disconnected. For example, this um, uh, gas line to the pneumatic valve can be disconnected, but it's a bit of a pain, um, so we don't bother. I don't think we've ever bothered to disconnect um, the, the, the various electronic lines to the turbo pump. Um, but, you know, it all depends on, on what you're doing. Um, the, the, the RGA, this um, square gray box in the middle, um, that's, um, that's necessarily off because we've disconnected, it's normally plugged in via that power board, so that's necessarily off. Um, that's another point, if you had been doing RGA, you should make sure you shut that, that down properly um, um, before disconnecting the power um, plug over, over here. So I think with that, we are now uh, essentially ready uh, to start our tip approach. Oh, one more thing. Uh, the other thing that we have over here are our, um, our TSP pump controllers. Uh, we don't want uh, a TSP firing in the middle of um, one of our STM measurements. So um, the TSPs, uh, uh, the TSP pumps, the titanium sublimation pumps, um, uh, here, so there's one in this chamber, there's one as well in the other chamber, and they're essentially just a loop of um, titanium wire, right, quite thick titanium wire um, that connects to these um, feed-throughs, and a very large current, you know, about 42 amps, I think we apply, um, passes through those, um, those filaments and causes titanium to sublimate uh, and so we, we sub, we, the sublimation happens for about a minute, and we've currently got them set up to fire once every eight hours. Okay, so I think both of them should be set up to fire once um, every eight hours. Actually, you can see this one looks like it's going to fire one hour from now, and this one is going to fire five hours from now. And we don't want that, that to happen while we are taking um, our measurements. Might not be the end of the world. Um, but there are various reasons why we don't want that to happen. So we're going to switch these pumps off. So all you have to do is to press this on, um, this here, this on off button. You press that um, once and it's off. And again, press this one once and it's off. Okay, so now with those off, um, there's no chance that they can fire during our measurement. Okay, so now we're ready to approach the tip.